I just got the uh, the new Spotlight feature in Microsoft Teams meetings, and I thought this would be a great time to go over all the nuances with spotlighting people in the context of a meeting, as well as how that differs from um, pinning participants in a meeting. So we're gonna look at um, just about everything that we can with these two features, compare and contrast them. If you look at my screen here, I've got a, a pretty big setup going on. I've got uh, three computers here. We've got me, John, in my lower corner, I can see Peach and Mario. And then I've got Peach's computer, which is a VM running right here. And you see me and Mario side by side. Then I've got Mario, which is a Dell computer behind me. And that has my face as well as Peach's face. So everybody sees each other. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna kinda like zoom in on the three of these. And that way I can show what happens for the person who's taking the action, as well as everybody else in the meeting, what they see whenever different actions are taken. So to get started with the spotlight feature. The, um, the spotlight feature, you need two things in order to do this. You need to be a presenter. So you need to have the presenter role in your meeting and you need to be running the full Teams application on your computer. So this doesn't work in the web version. I'm not sure if it's coming to the web version eventually or not, but um, if you right click on somebody in the web version of Teams, you won't get the, uh, the spotlight command. So if you're a presenter, you can right click on anybody in the meeting and you can spotlight them. What spotlighting does is that will make them full screen for everybody in the meeting. Say that Mario is the teacher in our little three person class and I want to make Mario the main focus for everybody in the meeting. Then I would right click on Mario and I hit spotlight right here. So because I'm a presenter, I'm able to spotlight someone else. Over on Mario's screen, he sees a banner that says, you're spotlighted, you've been highlighted for everyone else. So he sees a banner. The second indicator that he has been spotlighted is he sees this little icon in his preview video down in the bottom corner. He sees this little spotlight icon over his video. And then the third way that he sees that he is spotlighted is he has this white border around his video preview while he is in the spotlight. So if you look at the other two, look at my screen here, look at Peach's screen down here, um, we do not have a white border around us because we're not in the spotlight. Now, if I want to stop spotlighting Mario, I can just click the button at the top here to stop spotlighting. I also could right click and hit stop spotlighting. And alternatively, the third place is if I hover over the person's name and click the little dot, dot, dots, I can stop spotlighting that person as well. So I'm gonna click stop spotlighting. And now on everybody's screen, we go back to side by side. Mario gets a banner that says, you are no longer spotlighted. Now, what if I'm the teacher, everybody else is a student, so everybody's an attendee, I'm the only presenter, and I wanna spotlight myself? Well, the way that you do that is you can't necessarily click on your own video and spotlight yourself. The way that you get to it is you click on the participants pane right here at the top, the first button in the, in the toolbar. Click on that guy. And then whenever the participants load up, you can right click on yourself and hit spotlight me. And now I have gone full screen on Mario and Peach's screen. And I have a banner saying, hey, you're spotlighted. I've spotlighted myself in this uh, particular meeting. That's, that's how you would spotlight yourself is from the participant pane. Now, if somebody spotlights you, so let's say that I right click on Peach and I spotlight her. Peach is full screen on everybody's computer. Peach gets an indication that she has been spotlighted, you're spotlighted. How does she get rid of that? Well, she gets rid of it the same way that you would spotlight yourself. She would go to the participants pane again right here, show all the participants, and then she would see next to her name that she has been spotlighted. So she could right click, stop spotlighting, and now she has taken the spotlight away from herself. So that's how you can um, spotlight other people, spotlight yourself. Now, if Peach is abusing this functionality and I don't want her to be able to spotlight other people, keep in mind you can set up your meeting options before the meeting. So if you go into your meeting options as the organizer, you can say only I can present or only specific people can present 
and then you won't have students spotlighting random people. But if you need to, in the context of a meeting, say everybody's equal, everybody's a presenter, but you need to do it on the fly, I could just right click on Megan Bowen, which is Peach, and I could make her an attendee. Hit change, and now she has dropped down. The presenters and the attendees are separated, so she gets an indicator that you're now an attendee, and if she right clicks on Mario, she can no longer spotlight. She can only pin Mario. So that leads us to, well, what's the difference between spotlighting and pinning? The difference between these is that spotlighting affects other people in the meeting. Pinning someone only affects your view in the meeting. So while she can pin Mario, if I right click on Mario and hit pin, she can focus on just Mario's video and you'll see over here on Mario and John's uh, screens, there's no change to our screens. So it only affects the person who is pinning someone else. You also don't even get a visual indicator on your, if someone pins your video, you don't get any indicator that says, hey, you've been pinned by Peach. So Mario doesn't know he's been pinned. Peach can just focus on what Mario is talking about. So if you have like a sign language interpreter, or something like that, um, that student that needs that service can right click and pin that person just for themselves and get a nice full screen view of their sign language um, interpreter without having to affect anybody else in the meeting. So there's the difference between pinning and spotlighting. Now if I go back to Megan and I promote her to a presenter, then the attendee section goes away, everybody's in the meeting equally, now she could right click on Mario and spotlight him instead of pinning him. And you see that Mario pops up on my screen and on Mario's screen, he gets your spotlighted. He gets the two visual indicators showing that he has been spotlighted. So he's full screen for everybody else. Now, what happens whenever you're, um, uh, whenever you're recording the meeting? So we'll go back to nobody is spotlighted now. Everybody is just side by side. I'm gonna unpin Mario so that everybody is side by side. They're, this is just a normal meeting at this point. So if I go here and on my computer, I hit start recording, we'll wait till that um, actually starts up. We'll see what happens whenever, um, whenever a spotlight occurs. And let's say that I want to spotlight myself. I'm the teacher, I'm gonna spotlight myself for all my students. I would go to the participant pane. I would right click on my own name and hit spotlight me. And what happens is a little banner comes up, says you're spotlighted, but a second one that says spotlighted video won't be recorded. So that means that no matter what the organizer does and they wanna spotlight themselves, that will not be captured by the meeting recording, um, which I think is personally, I think that's, that's uh, unfortunate because I would expect that if a teacher wants to spotlight themselves for everybody else, that should probably be captured by the recording. But in, the, in at least its current state, um, right out of the box, it does not affect the recording in any way if you spotlight somebody. The, um, the only last thing that I think I could cover here is how does it behave whenever you're sharing some type of content, like you're sharing a screen or something like that. So if I, um, if I stop recording here real quick, I'm gonna stop recording. We'll go over here to um, Megan's computer and we'll have her start sharing her screen. Then we'll see what happens whenever you spotlight somebody. So we're gonna do the sharing options. Once that loads up here, I'm gonna share my own desktop. Okay, so I'm sharing my desktop now. Everybody else sees my desktop in the, uh, in the meeting here, hopefully. Seems like it's uh, lagging behind a little bit there. There we go. Um, my computer's running at like 98% CPU. Now, what happens if I spotlight Mario? So Peach's screen is being shared, but I, as another presenter, can right click and spotlight Mario. If I do that, you'll see that Mario becomes the full focus for that computer, or for, for my uh, window. Mario gets the your spotlighted feature, but it doesn't take it away from Mario for some reason. Now, if I bring up the meeting on Peach's screen, even though she's still sharing her screen, bring up the meeting right here, we'll see that Mario is in fact spotlighted even for the person 
who is sharing their screen. Let's maximize this so we can see the, uh, the ribbon along the bottom. And you see in the ribbon down here, if I minimize this meeting window again, uh, in the ribbon right here, that, that shared screen is still being shared in the meeting. It has just moved down to the bottom area where all of the other content is. Now, if I click on that, I can, for myself, see that content on the, uh, on the screen. So whenever you spotlight somebody and some content is being shared, that will replace that content with that person's face that you spotlighted. They get the full screen video, um, but the person, anybody in the meeting, has the ability to override that, um, that spotlight at the time by just clicking on the content from their little ribbon along the bottom, they can see that other one even though the person has been, has been spotlighted. The last thing that we're gonna test is what happens if we um, spotlight somebody, does that person, d does an attendee who has a spotlight forced upon them, um, are they able to switch out their view to see somebody else in the meeting? So right here, I'm the organizer, I'm going to spotlight myself I right click on myself. I am now spotlighted. So on the, the Peach and Mario side, you see that just my face is right here. Now, what if Mario wants to see Peach's video? If he clicks on um, Megan Bowen right here, he is not able to see her video, even though the spotlight is there. If he pins it, you can do it side by side like that. As an attendee, my account up here in the upper corner, I'm just an attendee. I can't spotlight or stop spotlighting Mario. But if I right click on Peach, I can pin her and now I can get side by side. So I have a little bit of control, but I can't get rid of Mario because he has been spotlighted for me and I'm only an attendee. So that's kind of something interesting to, to see. If I click on Peach, it doesn't just bring her up. I have to right click and I have to pin her if I want to see that side by side. But as you can see down here, that does not affect Peach. It also doesn't let, no, it doesn't let Peach know that she has been pinned by my account. She just sees Mario because he's the spotlight. So I hope that, um, that kind of explains a little bit of what's going on with this whole uh, new spotlight feature. There's a lot of like nuances there. I wanted to cover as many um, scenarios as I could think of to say like, you know, what happens if something's being recorded, what happens if there's content sharing, um, what happens if you're an attendee versus a presenter. If you find any other scenarios that I missed in this video, let me know in the comments below um, if you want me to test anything out, or if you find that Spotlight works um, particularly interesting in a use case that I didn't mention, such as like um, a meeting organizer wanting to force their face for everybody, or a teacher, student, you know, classroom type of a setup. If you come up with another scenario where spotlighting is really critical, let me know also in the comments below, and I'll be happy to try anything else out with this new exciting feature. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great week.